get started with today's episode, I would like to quickly read you our podcast disclaimer. This podcast is for educational purposes only, and it is not to substitute for professional care by a doctor or other qualified medical professional. You should always speak with your physician or other healthcare professionals before doing any fasting, changing your diet in any way, taking or adjusting any medications or supplements, or adopting any treatment plan for a health problem. The use of any other products or services purchased by you as a result of this podcast does not create a healthcare provider-patient relationship between you and any of the experts affiliated with this podcast. Any information and statements regarding dietary supplements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All right, and now we'll get started with today's episode. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Fasting Method Podcast, and this is Coach Terry Lance, and I am here with Megan Ramos, and very excited because we have not done an episode together in a while, so it's good to see you, Megan. How are you? <laughs> it's good to see you too, Terry. I'm good. I'm good. How are you feeling after everything? I'm mending. I am in the healing mode, out of the pain mode, so things are going pretty well after that spill on the bite. <laughs> It's been a busy fall around here at the Fasting Method already, and we still have half the fall to go. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully everyone will stay stay healthy and in one piece That's right. moving forwards. That is what we hope for. So Megan, as you and I were talking before we got started here, a while back we talked a little bit about consistency and the importance of consistency. And the idea that sometimes when people think of consistency, they get locked into being very rigid. And if they can't follow through with it, then they feel like they're failing. And this has been coming up a lot in our community lately. I know you talked about it in a group challenge in the community. So I wanted to see if we could just dive into it again here in a little more depth and talk about what consistency can look like for people without becoming rigid. Yeah, this happens a lot at the end of the summertime. You know, people's routines go out the window because it's summer and vacation, kids are home, grandkids. We hear a lot of these grandiose commitments as we approach Labor Day weekend of people saying every week for the rest of the year or until Thanksgiving, I'm going to do two 48-hour fasts or three 42-hour fasts. And they label those as being consistent, you know, Megan always says, and Terry, Nadia, and the passing with the team, consistency, consistency. So I'm going to every week, doesn't matter what happens in the universe, I'm going to be doing my 248s. Well, we love that commitment, the desire to commit to one's health like that. You know, it's important to understand that there are things that do affect our physical ability to actually fast. And it's outside of our control. And our bodies always can't do what our brains do. So as I'm starting to watch this unfold at the end of this past summer, I thought, okay, like, how do we help our community not get stuck in that cycle again? And I think it's something that as coaches always try to put our heads together at this particular time of year. We also see it again in January at the same type of thought process coming out of the December holidays. It reminded me that earlier in this year, in one of our community meetings, a member named Olga had shared in the meeting that in her quest to become consistent, she set some rules for herself to adhere to this consistency. So her goal was that every other day she was to do one of the following. If she was feeling totally up to it, she would do a 42-hour fast. If she was having more of a physical struggle with fasting, she would do a 24-hour fast. And if she was really struggling, having poor sleep, having stress, she would commit to a fat fast. All three are therapeutic approaches. 
but she realized that she had to give herself that flexibility and then had to commit to doing it on a regular basis. And that's what she had struggled with in the past was, you know, sometimes you say, okay, I'm going to fat fast. How long do you need to fat fast for? It can get murky. Then you might end up fat fasting for a little while and not quite sure when to start your fast again. So she just decided every other day she was going to wake up and assess how she felt and what was going on that day and make a decision. And another thing that came about in that discussion was just also that ability to have that fat fast day in case it fell on a Saturday or on a Sunday when she would be home with family or friends, there'd be a social event, she could always pivot and have a fat fasting type of meal and still stick with her schedule. I loved this approach when I heard about it, and our community members lovingly nicknamed it the Rolling Olgas. <laughs> and, um, you know, this actually at the time spread like wildfire in our community. And I remember it helping so many people at the beginning of the year. Another trend that I saw going into this fall was people really trying to do alternate daily fasting or ADF versus doing two fasts a week or three fasts a week. That adds in another layer of complexity, right? If you're trying to commit to doing 42-hour fasts every other day, so literally every other day, they're going to start to fall on weekends. It's not going to be the same schedule week in and week out. And that's very hard to adhere to. So trying to merge, you know, what our members' goals were, like what they were hoping to achieve, and give them some parameters. So we went back to what Olga had done and we had talked about doing that for the month of September. And I'll have to say every month in our community, we do a group fasting challenge. We try to set it up in such a way that everybody can participate, whether it's your first week ever fasting or your 100th week fasting, that it works for everyone. This is a rare challenge where people were really kind of doing the same fasting protocol all together because most people were striving to do something alternate day. We do these weekly check-ins where the members who are participating come and they get their chance to share their updates with myself and their peers and ask myself and their peers questions about the particular fasting strategy. And every week, it was so great to hear, you know, we gave ourselves that permission. So instead of having an eating day, we did a fat fast, you know, instead of not fasting, we knew we could push through with a 24. When we felt good, we did 42s. And as the month progressed, people were reporting, you know, coming out of weight loss stalls that have lasted for months, if not all of 2023 other metabolic health improvements. And it was just so rewarding to see. And then also to get them to really understand that, okay, wait, success doesn't have to look like doing a 42 hour fast every other day or three times a week. It's really about doing the therapeutic fasting protocol that's going to work for me and still showing up for it on a regular basis, whatever that might look like. And in this particular month, we tried to focus on every other day strategies. And it was just so cool because it really set people up for great success going into the rest of the fall. And now, you know, our members are giving themselves the ability to pivot and they're not tripping over their own feet trying to do something that their bodies just can't do. One of the reasons I think this was so powerful, Megan, is that it really goes back to that old saying, success begets success. If I'm really rigidly trying to follow something that I'm struggling with, I'm not feeling successful. And it's going to make next week hard because I already feel like I'm not succeeding. And the next week. But if I do a plan like this, if I think about consistency this way, I'm succeeding, whether I'm fasting that day, the full day, doing a 24, doing a fat fast, I can't really fail. So that success builds to the next week. And so maybe this was a week where I wasn't really able to do any of the 42s, but I did fat fasting days and I did 24s. That next week, I feel good about what I've done 
that may help me feel ready to do one of those 42s. So I think it was so powerful because again, it just keeps supporting people that they're succeeding. And all of us want to succeed. We feel better when we succeed. We trust ourselves more. We're willing to take more risks when we feel like we're succeeding. And so I think that was why this was such a smart challenge for you to choose. And I, I think for so many people in the community, these monthly group challenges are really powerful because like you said, they can do it at their own level, but everyone's in it together, even though they may be doing it a little differently. And I think that was something that I've been noticing is so powerful about these monthly challenges that you host in the community. It was just really nice to see everybody being able to participate at the same time. I mean, we try to do that every month and we've been pretty successful at it. With this challenge, we had some new people just starting off like the first couple of weeks. They did fat fasting every other day. And then they moved into starting to incorporate some 24s over the course of the month. And they saw the results pay off. Now they're earlier in the journey. They're going to see a little bit more results doing some shorter protocols. But it's so inspiring. Like you said, that success is really is critical to helping us develop habits or improve previous habits we need to have those successors and it was really cool too to see some of our more long-term members who've been kind of tripping over doing longer fasts and it just not really working out for them for various reasons maybe stress maybe other health issues going on or just circumstantial with life and busyness but then take a step back and say okay no today I can do a 24 or today I can do a fat fast I don't need to do a 42 and on the days when they could do the 42 they do the 42 and then see hey it's the end of the month and I've lost eight pounds after being in this stall and I lost eight pounds by incorporating some other therapeutic strategies. So I don't have to put all the pressure in the world on me to do 42, 48, 66, 72 hour fasts all of the time like they had been doing. And that was really neat to see as well because you could just tell some of them in the check-ins, they just had this huge physical sigh of relief that you know the answer isn't always doing longer fasts and more fasting it's really just about being consistent with therapeutic strategies and that's what pays off in the end and just seeing that light bulb go off and that click for so many people it was just so rewarding being part of that because like yes these people are going to go into this holiday season and they're going to be the best metabolic versions of themselves. And that means they're going to have a more successful holiday season. And they truly are going to be starting the new year, their best selves, and just being able to really crush the remainder of their goals. I just love it. And I think it's such a great concept. I know at a recent coaching discussion that our team had, we we're talking about it, you know, and how to build more strategies like that into the fasting method community and coaching programs because of how successful it is. So people really, you know, we don't have to get stuck in a box. And so many people put themselves in a box when it comes to fasting. And that's often where we see the their wheels start to spin and they're not really making a whole lot of progress moving forwards. Somehow I just had a CrossFit analogy go through my mind. When I was doing CrossFit years ago, one of the skills that I didn't really enjoy doing was a box jump. And it's like, if there's a really big box, you have to try and jump on it. It might feel overwhelming, but if you start with a smaller box, so starting, let's say you're off track or you're newer to fasting. If you start with a plan like this to build consistency, it's jumping onto that smaller box until you gain the skills, the strength, the competence, the confidence, and then you're gonna move up to those bigger boxes. I think it's a great approach for people to utilize too. If they've maybe hit a place of kind of fasting burnout, rather than turning off that fasting dial, you know, that's one of my favorite analogies, rather than turning off that dial, you just turn it down 
get onto a smaller box, do something else that means consistency, that is still giving your body the things that it needs. This is one of those times where after the fact, I look at it and I think, dang, Megan really knew what she was doing by choosing that because it's been so valuable for all of us mindset wise. And like you said, physically to feel that success and to learn that we can adjust rather than just hit the nail harder, 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 that we can really adjust it for ourselves. So um, I think this has been a great thing and I hope people will use it moving forward, coming back from a vacation, coming out of these next holidays that we're coming into, different seasons of the year, different life stressors. You know, I've talked with so many people lately that have been having some really high pressure things going on at work or with just some things going on in the world today. It's really stressful and, you know, people concerned about family members and safety and things. So to be able to adjust rather than just push yourself to keep up with the exact same thing, I think this is brilliant for people to learn this other form of being consistent. We are so hard on ourselves. And something that I realized that I understood from my educational background and my work experience that a lot of the people we work with don't have that experience is that there's so many factors that do affect us physiologically and our ability to fast. So when I was going through my journey, if I could only do 24s, I'd do 24s. And if I felt good, I'd do my 42s. And usually the week was pretty much a mashup of some good nights of sleep, some that poor nights of sleep, some stress, some good days. So most of my weeks were a medley of 24s and 42s. And then, of course, there are some weeks where you just focus on good time-restricted eating and nutrition. And that, to me, helped me understand what consistency was and reach my goals. But I had that understanding. I didn't get mad at myself. If I slept poorly and was more hungry the next day and couldn't do a 42, I understood that there wasn't a flaw with my character. I understood that it wasn't a matter of willpower. I knew that there were hormones that were at play that I couldn't necessarily control. I couldn't meditate my way out of, I couldn't go to the gym and sort out. I just had to let my body re-regulate over the course of the day or even a couple days or even the week, depending on what was going on. And then when we started doing fasting with other individuals who just didn't have this medical background, I saw how hard it was for them because they all took it as a sign of lack of willpower or a character flaw or something that they weren't going to be successful with. And I realized, okay, this is something we really need to teach them. You know, just like I learned about physiology and medicine. I didn't learn a whole lot about finance and accounting, you know, and how to educate myself on that when I had to start paying taxes and investing for retirement and those type of things. So I need to teach them that about the physiology. But we've been so ridiculed over the last like 50 years from healthcare providers and media friends and family who didn't have the education that our obesity or excess body weight was our fault, that it was a character flaw. And we've been told this repeatedly. It's been the subject line of sitcoms. It's been themes of movies. You know, it gets to the point where people don't even want to go to the doctor because they're afraid of getting on the scale and just being told, you know, what are you doing? Or why aren't you listening to me? Or, you know, why can't you just lose weight? when you're trying to do everything you can. The education piece, you know, our community, everyone is so smart and get the cortisol, get the sleep. But after years and decades of just being given tons of grief and being blamed for your circumstances, it's really hard 
to sort of get outside of that mindset that if you can't do what you set your mind to, that it's got to be a lack of willpower or personality flaw. So I really love when we can establish sort of these out-of-the-box strategies like the rolling Olga's. We'll have to formulate a more official approach to what this strategy is as much as we love our community member Olga, but really present it to the world, I think. I think this is going to be the approach that really does help a lot of people reach their goal. So that's one of the things I think we're always working on at transforming at the fasting method. It's like, okay, we've we put out these boxes, you know, in these protocols, and now we've seen that they don't always work for everybody. So how can we come up with some new strategies to really help people get there? And it's just been such a cool experience of these Olgas throughout 2023 and such a great way that people are continuing them throughout the year and throughout the fall and into the holiday season. And my hope, Megan, is that maybe after listening to this podcast episode, if anyone who isn't already in the community and didn't get to participate in that challenge might really take this strategy to heart and give themselves some time to start practicing it and seeing if they can get into that mode of success, begetting success and start experiencing the benefits for their body until they feel like they can do those other levels of fasting and come back when they need to always having that safe space so i hope that whether you're in the community and already participated and are already applying this strategy or if you're just really hearing about it for the first time i hope that you can take into account another way to think about consistently showing up for yourself It's a strategy we're definitely going to come back to in the group challenges and are actively working on some variations of it so we can do them in more group challenges as we wrap up this year and move into next year because I think teaching this particular skill set is going to be so, again, critical for helping people. And I just know that the next year, you know, you can really crush it with your goals, everybody. It's just so amazing what we see every day, what we've all personally experienced, but sort of learning some of these nuances and how to navigate them. And this Olga strategy has been so eye-opening for us. And I look forward to sharing some of the new strategies we've been working on with people in the community and through our coaching program in the months to come, because it's really exciting. I think we're going to see a lot of health optimization and a lot of people coming off of insulin and melting away the body fat in the months to come. Well, thanks everyone for being here. We will be back with another episode next week and our Bite Size episodes. So take good care, everybody, and happy fasting. Bye, everyone. Bye.